Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our first HashiCorp snapshot session, which today will be hosted by Cameron Heismans. So today Cam's going to talk about policy as code with Terraform and Sentinel, specifically how you can leverage Sentinel and Terraform to provide a consistent workflow for implementing your corporate policies in a codified manner across public clouds, private cloud, and other application infrastructure. I also want to note that this session is being recorded and a recording will be made available after post-processing, usually within a day or two. I'll email it out to you all after this. So today's demo will last about 15 minutes and then we'll allow five minutes at the end for questions if we have time. But in the meantime, please submit your questions through the, throughout the demo um, via the Zoom Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer them as we go. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And over to you, Cam. Well, I might give it um, give it a minute, Pete, because I can see a heap of people still joining. Um, okay. When that plateaus off. Cool. So yeah, my name's Cameron Heismans. I'm a staff solutions engineer at HashiCorp. And today I'm going to walk you through a really quick uh, introduction and demonstration of policy as code with Terraform and Sentinel. But before we get started into you know, what the details of Sentinel is and what it does, I really wanted to run through some uh, common customer scenarios that we hear all the time. Right? So the first scenario is around you know, requesting and building infrastructure. And if we look at a common infrastructure workflow, uh, it might look like something like this. Uh, uh, you might request a machine, you might request an IP address, a host name, a certificate, you know, some sort of firewall rule, load balancer, you know, you get the picture. But for most organizations, we've augmented that with some sort of ticketing process. So now to get that machine, we, we log a ticket. To get an IP address, we log a ticket. To get a firewall rule or a load balancer, we log a ticket. And typically, you know, those are all different, very different teams, right? So, what we prescribe at HashiCorp is a infrastructure as code approach to solving that problem. So now what I can do is I can codify the request for the machine, codify the request for the host name, certificate, et cetera. And what we enable with that codification is really a self-serve process, right? The ability to either consume code from someone else and, and um, publish that, or to be able to write your own code to be able to, to self-serve um, your infrastructure. But with that, there's this new blocker that's come about. The whole pull request slash peer review system um, has, has meant that not only now can I self-serve my code, but I need to get someone else to check over it, right? I still need to almost put it into a queue for someone to, um, to have a view of um, and then to, to be able to approve. So some of the problems I see with that uh, peer review process is that you still need to peer review all those changes, right? Regardless of how trivial or straightforward a change might be, um, the change still needs to be <laughs> Um, some of those peer reviews can take time, right? Uh, depending on the nature, that might be a long time to be something detailed or it might be a short amount of time. Um, but obviously there's some sort of implicit trust, right? When I get someone to do a peer review, I'm really trusting that that person will understand the thing that they're reviewing, right? They'll understand the security metrics, they'll understand um, all the complications of that thing, right? And, I, and I'm trusting that they'll be able to understand what I've written the code and be able to do that maybe in a better way or to approve that that is a sanctioned way, right? And then a lot of that just lives in people's head. So that trust comes back to, you know, certain key contributors who um, have maybe a heap of certs to their name or they've been working with the cloud platform for a while or the on-prem platform, right? And so what we know then is that this just doesn't scale, right? Um, soon, this whole peer review process becomes a blocker in most organizations. So the question that we hear a lot at HashiCorp is, how can we streamline that peer review process? The second scenario that I wanted to have a quick walkthrough is a very typical, you know, somewhat basic incident management process. So most people, when they look at incident management, might look at something like this, right? Someone reports an incident, that incident is then assigned to some sort of workflow or system um, that gets reviewed by um, maybe a, a workflow owner They'll investigate some sort of root cause. Maybe they'll come up with a workaround. They'll verify that that works and then you know, close off that um, incident. For some organizations, they take that you know, a step further. 
They might have some sort of retrospective process where they you know, review what worked well, what worked, you know, could have been done better. And ultimately that you know, results in some sort of update, right? A documentation update or a process update or maybe some change to a wiki. And so some of the problems that we see with that is that because a lot of those are documentation, you know, changes like those post-mortem exercises are changes to documentation, it's really hard to continue to enforce those, right? Um, if a change to a pattern or a deployment was made by a documentation um, and I feel like I know how to do something already, what compels me to come back to that, right? So I, I find it really hard to continue enforcement, um, especially after people feel they know that. And then, of course, I, I'm trying to enforce this, uh, you know, change on people, right? I'm relying on a person to go and view documentation, view the changes to that documentation, continue to use that documentation, right? Outside of that, that process, you know, documentation changes, it's also really hard to enforce endorsed patterns. An endorsed pattern might be something like a um, AWS Well Architected Framework. It might be uh, some sort of sys benchmark, right? So we know that those patterns exist before we even go and deploy something. How do we go and use them? So for that style of scenario, you know, the question comes up, how can we codify those documentation updates? Well, the answer is Sentinel. What is Sentinel? It's a policy as code framework um, that treats policy like an application, right? So you can version control it, you can peer review it, you can automate testing. Um, Sentinel can be fine grained. So we allow you to reject actions on any available input rather than, you know, course gain rewrite. It's embedded right into the framework. So when people use Sentinel and you'll see this in a demo, um, it's part of the workflow that Sentinel will go and enforce uh, some sort of action, right? You don't need to kind of build it yourself. We also have multiple enforcement levels. So there's a uh, advisory, soft mandatory and hard mandatory, right? So you can have some control over how you enforce your policy. Policies can also look externally for information. So an example of that might be looking at a console health check or uh, some sort of budgeting system to understand that, you know, some sort of cost implication. And then finally, like everything at HashiCorp, Sentinel is multi-cloud. <clears throat> so let's have a quick um, think about a demo, right? And in this demo, um, we kind of have a typical user who might want to go and deploy something like a GKE cluster. So if I was to start this from scratch, you know, how would I do it? Well, first of all, I'd probably go and write some Terraform code. I'd put that into some sort of version control system, submit a pull request, get some people to re review that pull request. You know, maybe they're going to look at, you know, what are the best practices for that cluster or how do we secure that cluster? And then ultimately we'll be able to deploy that. But in this demo, in this organization, we've enabled our security team to write their own policies as code with Sentinel, right? So I've got a security team who now can write policy, deploy that and apply it to a Terraform workspace. So let's dig a bit deeper. If I was a security person, I might want to be able to start uh, my security thing, my security uh, policy from some sort of known place. Recently, we announced um, within Terraform, our Terraform foundational policies library, which allows you to bootstrap some central policies from some stuff that we've already written. So in this example, I'm going to dig deeper into a sys benchmark for GCP Kubernetes, right? Within the readme, you can see that within a few lines of code, I can start enforcing some policies for uh, different kinds of scenarios. This scenario might be to ensure the stack driver logging is set, right? So let's have a look at how that might work in a typical workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my uh, Terraform Enterprise workspace. I haven't got any workspaces set up, so I'm just going to bootstrap one from scratch. This first workspace is, is, going, to have, is going to be connected to my uh, version control system and to a very vanilla um, looking Terraform. So how would I go about writing some Terraform for Google Kubernetes? Well, I'd come over to the Terraform provider documentation, grab a Google container cluster code. I'd copy this code and paste it in, right? So here's what I've done. I've done that exact same thing. I've put it into a main.tf and I've connected that to this workspace. This workspace also has some um, variables so that it can go and um, authenticate, right? So the first thing I do is probably go and queue that plan, right? And this would be my first test. I'm going to queue this plan. I'm going to get Terraform to evaluate that plan and determine, you know, what's going to go on. And at this point in time, even though my security team have, you know, written some policies, we haven't applied that. So this is kind of a very typical scenario, right? I write some infrastructure code, I get the plan uh, to go and you know, determine what's going to be added. 
Um, and then I can basically go ahead once that plan has succeeded and apply this, right? But in this example, my security team don't want this to happen, right? So I'm gonna discard this plan and I'm gonna say, this run's not needed. What I'm gonna allow now is I'm gonna get my security team to come back to their policy set for GCP governance. And I'm gonna apply that to a certain workspace, right? So if I find my GCP Kubernetes cluster, I'm gonna add this workspace in, update my policy set. If I go back to my workspace again, and I'll just filter this down, I can queue another plan, right? And this time I've got security enabled, right? So I've got my Sentinel policy as code already in place. Once again, the plan's gonna run. I can see that that's running from my GitHub on my repo that has my main, right? But now, once that plan's run, we're injecting a few more policy checks, right? And this is really the piece where now I allow my user to get some instantaneous feedback as to what might or might not pass on security checks. So you can see with some vanilla code, I've been able to uh, automatically determine that there are a few things that don't pass my sys benchmarks, right? So if you think about that whole pull request peer review system now, um, without asking anyone else in the team, I've been able to find out that my code um, passes a few checks, but also doesn't pass some others, right? So what I could do now is go back to, as an example, that foundational policy library and dig a bit deeper into, you know, what might be failing, why it's failing, and what I need to do to improve my code. Ultimately, depending on how I enforce uh, this policy, I either allow my users to proceed, you know, they can confirm and apply, or we can um, you know, discard this run and keep iterating until we've solved that problem. So just to recap, what we allowed users to do with Terraform was to um, instantaneously create through infrastructure as code, um, some really quick wins around you know, moving from a, a ticketing system to a self-serve system. We introduced a version control system to enable to iterate upon that and then gain some insight into you know, versioned infrastructure as code. Finally, we said that that peer review system was a bit of a blocker. So what we've done is enable policy as code with Sentinel. And a key part of that policy as code today was the uh, Terraform foundational Sentinel policies, which allow you to do it within a few lines of code, bootstrap some policy without having to write them from scratch. Thanks, that's all for the demo today. Thanks for that, Cam. Sorry, I was just trying to click on my button, my mute button. Um, thanks for that demonstration. Really, really good, um, short and clear. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of our um, first snapshot session. And if you do have any questions um, that you would like to ask, just pop them in, in the, in the Q&A section there while I wrap up. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today's session and have a better understanding of the benefits of implementing uh, policy as code with Terraform and Sentinel. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the call, um, this snapshot was recorded and we'll, be make, we'll make the recording available <clears throat> on our website soon. And we'll also send an email to everyone who registered with a recording to that link. Um, and if you liked anything that you heard today and want to explore a bit further with Terraform and Sentinel, I encourage you to check out our Learn site and you can see the URL there on the, on the screen. Um, it's uh, yeah, learn.hashicorp.com. Um, and um, so, yeah, also um, don't forget to register to our future HashiCorp sessions. We will be running these fortnightly. Uh, and the next one is on the topic of transformation tokenization secret engine, which will be held on uh, May 12. So register at that URL, hashicorp.com forward slash events forward slash uh, hashtag snapshots. So thanks again, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and um, bye for now.